Jonathan yeah. Turley is with us now. Sir, good to have you on here. I want to get to both topics now. First on the Bidens here. Uh, this is what I find interesting, that Republicans in the House are coalescing together. And, and the example I'd give you is this gentleman by the name of Mike Garcia. He represents a Bi heavily Biden district in California. He's a Republican. He won, however, and his quote was, they've made it clear they won't cooperate unless we formalize it, so let's formalize it. So if and when they do, what changes then, what powers would they have in Congress? Well, the real question, I think, is whether a single Democrat will walk across the aisle and say, I'm voting not for impeachment, but for, for answers. I mean, the, these committees have shown millions of dollars coming from dozens of shell companies and accounts to various Biden family members. There's references and emails, including from Hunter Biden, of revenue going to the president. The president stands contradicted on long assertions made to the public. It does appear that he has lied about his lack of knowledge and involvement involvement with these dealings. So the weird thing is the Democrats are facing that and they're saying, okay, let's stop. Okay, let, let's go no further uh, to get these answers by voting for the inquiry. It's sort of a like don't ask, don't tell policy for influence peddling. You know, you're right at the point where these committees need to compel testimony to get these answers. And there's a good chance that not a single Democratic member will say that the yeah. public is entitled to those answers. That's a really Even interesting. Even though 40% yeah. of the Democrats. Yeah, it's, it's an yeah. interesting answer. It's ahead, really I'm something sorry. to watch, too. I got it on that. Uh, I just want to squeeze in this other thing. I, I want our viewers to see what the calendar looks like for Donald Trump politically and legally coming up the new year. Everything you see in blue deals with politics. Everything you see with red deals with the courtroom. So Jack Smith has asked the U.S. Supreme Court to fast track a decision. So here are the dates I'm looking at, right? Um, March 4th is the day before Super Tuesday. March 4th is when the trial is expected to be started. The justices have asked Trump's lawyers to give them an answer by the 20th of December, about nine days from now. The court will meet again on the 5th of January. What is the question before the court, Professor? Well, what the special counsel is trying to do is a leapfrog over the D.C. Circuit, which just got this issue of presidential immunity. Normally, the court wants to hear from not one but multiple court of appeals. What Smith is saying is, let's skip that. I need an answer now. And the priority uh, for Smith is clearly to get Trump uh, tried and, in his view, hopefully convicted before the election. So it sort of flips the DOJ policy, which has been long to avoid having these trials before election. Smith is fighting to make sure that he can shoehorn this in to that schedule. You know, the Supreme Court may not have the same priority. You know, they may look at this and say, well, we don't understand why this is such an, a, a, an urgent rush, uh, rather than to have the Court of Appeals make its decision and let us all try to get this right. We'll see what they do. Wow. I mean, there's, there is drama in that decision. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Jonathan Turley for shaking that out with us today. Thank you, Bill. Nice to see you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.